Now, the first step in understanding throttling, well, it's knowing how to identify when Microsoft Graph is actually doing the throttling. So with HTTP APIs, the result of a request is indicated by the HTTP status code that's returned. HTTP status codes are classified in a couple different groups. So for example, successful status codes, those are in the range of 200 to 209. So some common ones you've probably seen is like 200, which is used when requesting a resource, or 201 and 204, which are used on write operations for creating, updating, and deleting resources. Error status codes are in the ranges of 400 to 499, um, and also sometimes 500s. Common failed status codes include things like 400 is a bad request, 401 and 403 are usually permissions or authentication errors, 404 means I don't know what it was. Another status code that you could receive is a 503, that's a service unavailable. Now, Microsoft returns the service unavailable code when the service is unhealthy and it isn't related to throttling or traffic from a specific application or request. Now, your, your application should handle this response code, but there's nothing that you can do to take action to avoid it or to mitigate it. It's just something that's going on with the service. The status code that you return, that's returned when things are being throttled is a 429. That means too many requests. Now, all requests that are throttled by Microsoft Graph will always return a 429 uh, status code when they're being throttled. Now, keep in mind, Microsoft Graph, it's a proxy service with to multiple Microsoft Graph services. These include Azure Active Directory for users and groups, Exchange for calendar, contacts, and messages, OneDrive, OneNote, SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, and many more. Each of these services has their own rules and calculations for when limits are exceeded and future requests will be throttled. Many, but not all, of these endpoints will also return an additional value in the response's HTTP headers that the requester can use to determine how long they should wait before submitting another request. Now the header value retry after is an integer and that represents the number of seconds the client should wait before submitting the request again. Any requests sent before this time will continue to be throttled and they may actually cause the retry after value to increase as well. Now, not all services are include the retry after value. So your application should have a default number to rely on when this HP header is not included. Some services have hard-coded retry after values, while other services have dynamic numbers that are calculated based on the type of the request and the current conditions. So you, wouldn't, you shouldn't treat one retry after as a universal or a uniform number across the entire service for all future requests. Now that we've covered what throttling is and why they can be what why requests can be throttled and what it means, let's look at some common scenarios that can cause requests to be throttled. Determining if a request is going to be throttled, it's not an exact science. You won't find re reliable metrics that can be applied or assumed across all applications and endpoints and request types. Rather, let's just consider what goes into determining when a request should be throttled. As a general rule, think of it like this. How expensive a request is on a particular endpoint is the determining factor. What's used to determine how expensive the request is? Huh, well, that's the part that depends on different situations. What endpoint is requesting that your request is targeting, if the request is a read operation or a write operation, um, and how complex the request is. Here are a few scenarios that can experience throttle requests. A large number of requests across multiple endpoints in a tenant or a large number of requests from a specific application across all tenants is one way. Another way is a large number of requests for large data responses. So consider a request that uses the expand query operator. Expand tells Microsoft Graph to get additional data and include it in the request. If the request isn't using data limiting query parameters such as $select or $top or $skip, for instance, the service must work harder to retrieve and include larger data sets in the response. The request would be much more expensive than asking for the names, emails, and IDs of all the users. Another example is a, a large number of complex requests. So similar to the previous one, consider a request that is forcing Microsoft Graph to not only retrieve additional data, such as using the expand query operator, but also to do conditional checks on the data, such as using a filter query parameter to limit the data results. Just consider how expensive the request is. The more expensive it is, and the more these requests you send, the more likely the request is gonna eventually be throttled. 